Like everything else, companies are born, they grow, and eventually they decline. The space industry works the same way. Over the past few years, a lot has changed. New companies have entered the market, launch rates have increased, and competition has become more intense than ever. One company in particular has completely reshaped the industry. SpaceX didn't just succeed, it took over. Today, SpaceX is the most active, most reliable, and most successful launch company the space industry has ever seen. At the same time, we're starting to see the decline of one of the oldest and once most trusted launch companies in the United States, United Launch Alliance, or ULA. In this video, we're going to break down what's happening to ULA, how it went from being the safest choice in space launches to struggling to stay competitive, and why its future now looks uncertain. Before we go further, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates on space and launch industry news. To understand where ULA is today, we need to look at where it started. ULA was created in 2006 as a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. At the time, this wasn't a risky business move. It was a way to combine two proven launch providers into one company that could reliably handle the most important missions for the U.S. government. ULA operated two main rockets, Atlas V and Delta IV. These rockets didn't launch often, but they were extremely reliable. Atlas V, in particular, became one of the most dependable rockets ever built. It flew dozens of missions without a single failure. Delta IV Heavy was used for some of the most demanding missions, including large military and intelligence satellites that required very precise orbits. For years, ULA was the default choice for national security launches. If the payload was expensive, classified, or critical, ULA got the contract. Cost wasn't the main concern. That's how ULA built its reputation. But that model started to break down in the early 2000s when SpaceX entered the market. At first, SpaceX wasn't taken seriously by many people in the industry. Falcon 9 had early failures, and the idea of landing and reusing rockets sounded risky. ULA executives publicly questioned whether reusability made sense at all. Then SpaceX proved it worked. Falcon 9 started flying more often, landings became routine, boosters were reused again and again. Instead of launching a few times per year, SpaceX began launching dozens of times. Costs dropped fast, and turnaround times got shorter. The government took notice. Eventually, SpaceX began winning national security contracts, something that once seemed impossible. That's when ULA's position started to weaken. In response, ULA announced Vulcan Centaur, a new rocket meant to replace both Atlas V and Delta IV. Vulcan was supposed to be cheaper, easier to build, and competitive with Falcon 9. It would also stop using the Russian engine and switch to Blue Origin's BE-4, solving long-term political and supply issues. On paper, Vulcan made sense. In reality, it arrived late. The BE-4 engine took years longer than expected to mature. Vulcan's first flight slipped again and again. While SpaceX kept launching, ULA was stuck waiting. By the time Vulcan finally flew, Falcon 9 was already fully reusable and flying at an unmatched rate. Then Vulcan ran into another problem. During its second test flight in late 2024, one of its solid rocket boosters malfunctioned. The booster had a nozzle defect linked to a manufacturing issue. That triggered a full investigation which added months to the schedule. But what happened recently made one thing very clear. There is no realistic way ULA can compete with SpaceX anymore. The turning point was the most recent military launch that SpaceX carried out for the Space Force. The mission involved launching a critical navigation satellite that had been sitting in storage, waiting for a ride to orbit. In the past, getting a satellite like this ready for launch usually took close to two years. Even after years of process improvements, the fastest launches still took around five months. This time, SpaceX launched the satellite in just three months. That single number says a lot. It shows that the Space Force can now move faster than ever before. This only worked because SpaceX had rockets ready to go. Falcon 9 launches frequently. Boosters are reused. Originally, this mission was expected to fly on ULA's new Vulcan rocket. But Vulcan wasn't ready. 
That's how this recent mission ended up flying on Falcon 9 instead of Vulcan. Vulcan did eventually receive approval to carry national security payloads, and earlier this year it completed its first military launch. But that didn't change the bigger problem. Vulcan is still flying at a very low rate. So far this year, Vulcan has flown only once. ULA originally talked about flying close to 10 Vulcan missions. Instead, most of its launches are still being carried out by Atlas V, a rocket that was supposed to be retired by now. And that situation alone shows how far behind ULA really is. Its future rocket isn't flying, while its old rocket is doing most of the work. ULA says it wants to eventually reach about two launches per month, which would be around 24 launches per year. A few years ago, that would have sounded impressive. Today, it doesn't even come close to what SpaceX is already doing. To understand the gap, you only need to look at the launch numbers. In 2023, SpaceX completed 96 Falcon launches. Most of those were Falcon 9 flights, with a few Falcon Heavy missions mixed in. That alone made SpaceX the most active launch provider in the world that year. In 2024, SpaceX pushed even further. The company flew 134 Falcon missions in a single year, again, mostly Falcon 9. At that point, SpaceX was responsible for the majority of orbital launches coming out of the United States. No other company was even close. In 2025, SpaceX broke its own records again. So far this year, Falcon 9 has already flown more than 150 times, and the year isn't even finished yet. If the current pace holds, SpaceX is on track to reach close to 170 Falcon launches by the end of the year. That averages out to more than 13 launches per month, sometimes even multiple launches in a single week. Now compare that to ULA. This year, ULA has only managed a small number of launches in total. Vulcan, the rocket meant to be ULA's future, has only flown once this year. Even if ULA somehow reached its goal of two launches per month, it would still be far behind. SpaceX is already launching at five to six times that rate. And this difference in launch frequency isn't just about bragging rights. It directly affects cost, flexibility, and customer confidence. That brings us to the cost problem which is where the gap becomes even harder to ignore. SpaceX advertises a Falcon 9 launch price of around $62 to $67 million for commercial customers. Even when additional requirements are added for government or military missions, the price usually stays under $100 million. And because Falcon 9 boosters are reused many times, the actual internal cost to SpaceX is believed to be much lower than what customers pay. Thanks to reuse, SpaceX doesn't need to build a brand new rocket for every launch. Boosters regularly fly 10 or more times. That spreads manufacturing and development costs across many missions and allows SpaceX to keep rockets available almost all the time. ULA's rockets work very differently. Atlas V typically costs well over $100 million per launch, and in some cases can reach $150 million depending on configuration. Every launch uses brand new hardware. Once the mission is complete, the rocket is gone. Nothing comes back to fly again. Vulcan was supposed to change this. It was designed to be cheaper than Atlas V and more competitive. But Vulcan is still mostly expendable, and with such a low flight rate, any cost advantages are limited. ULA has talked about future reuse concepts, but those plans are still theoretical and far behind what SpaceX is already doing in practice. There's also the cost per astronaut seat, which matters for crewed missions. SpaceX's Crew Dragon carries astronauts to orbit at a significantly lower cost per seat than older systems. Seats on Dragon are estimated to cost around $55 million per astronaut. In comparison, past government contracts for crew transport on older systems reached well over $80 million per seat. When customers look at all of this together, the picture is clear. SpaceX offers more launches, faster turnaround, and lower costs. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.